in Matthew's gospel. Uh, if you'll look, I'll just kind of lay a little groundwork here, but if you'll turn to chapter, uh, <clears throat> chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, and in verse 1 and 2 it says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now it's very important that you pay attention to what John was preaching. John did not say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Amen. That's not what he said. It tells you what he said. He said, repent for the kingdom is at hand. That's what John preached. Not only that, he said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All right. Now if you go to chapter 4 verse 17, and John was six months older than the Lord Jesus Christ. They were cousins. And then when you get over to chapter 4, verse 17, it says, From that time forth Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay? So John is the forerunner, and he's preaching to the nation of Israel, and he's telling them to repent, for the kingdom is at hand. The kingdom was at hand because the king was at hand. And as I said last time, you cannot have a kingdom without a king. If there is no king, there is no kingdom. You may have a republic, you may have something else, but you don't have a kingdom. Israel today does not have a king. Jordan has a king. Syria has a king. Some of the surrounding countries have kings, but Israel does not have a king. They had kings for thousands of years, but they don't have a king tonight. They are not a kingdom. Okay? They don't have a king. Now then, if you will turn to chapter 10 in Matthew, you'll notice by this time our Lord has recruited His twelve disciples. And uh, in chapter 10, <clears throat> He calls them and He commissions them. And there in Matthew chapter 10, it says, And when he had called unto him his twelve. It's significant that he had twelve because you have twelve tribes of Israel. And so he called the twelve disciples and he gave them power, one, against unclean spirits, two, to cast them out, I guess it would, and three, to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And it gives the names of the twelve in verses 2 on down through uh, verse 5. And then his commission in the last part of verse 5, notice what he said to them. He says, Go not in the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he says, as you go, verse 7, here's what you preach. Say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see that? That's what John the Baptist preached in chapter 2 there. That's what Jesus preached in chapter 4. Now that's what he commissions his disciples to preach. Say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Notice again, if you will, in verse 8, he said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass for your purse, nor scrip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes nor staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. Now certainly I've never heard any Baptist preach that as their commission. Because it isn't. It's a kingdom commission. And, you'll, and, the, and, and, and the thing about the book of Matthew is you couldn't find the plan of salvation for the Christian today, if your life depended on it, in the book of Matthew. Right. You can't find a plan of salvation in the book of Matthew for today's Christian. I doubt that anybody in this building has ever gone to church and heard anyone preach, repent for the kingdom is at hand. You may have, but I, I doubt it. Because the kingdom is not at hand, because the kingdom is not, the king is not here. The king has been rejected. 
So what you have here then in the Gospel of Matthew and in the Gospels is you have a Gospel called the Gospel of the Kingdom. The word Gospel simply means good news. That's all it means. The news is not always the same. It doesn't have to be the same news to be good news. The good news here is the kingdom was at hand. That's the good news for Israel. Repent, the king is, kingdom is at hand. That's the good news. The bad news was they didn't repent. That's not the good news today. The good news is not that the kingdom is at hand. That's not the good news, but there is good news. The good news is Jesus Christ died for sinners. That's the good news today, isn't it? See, and you can be saved by grace through faith plus nothing. That's good news. Especially if you know you're lost, is it, it's, it's excellent news Amen. to you. All right. Now when you come over to chapter 13 then, this thought continues. Now Jesus knew something that none of the disciples knew. They didn't know this, obviously, so he's teaching them. And what he's going to teach them in chapter 13 is what I'm going to talk a little bit about tonight. But it's in the context of what I've been saying already. This kingdom of heaven, this gospel of the kingdom of heaven. It says, on the same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the, side, by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and a whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things, saying in parables. And he said, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Number four. And when he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Verse five. Some fell on stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no depthness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Number seven, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. And number eight, others fell on good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. And he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now down in verse 10, the disciples ask our Lord the question, Why do you speak to these people in parables? And his answer might surprise you. But look down in verse 11, and he answered and said, Because it is given unto you, that is the disciples, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Now the word mystery is not some Alfred Hitchcock uh, thought or something that you have to come to a particular degree within the religious realm before you're told this. But a mystery in the Bible is something that simply wasn't known before and is now revealed, is now made known. So that Jesus was going to set up the kingdom was not a mystery. It was no mystery that the kingdom was going to be given to Israel. That was not a mystery. It's all through the Old Testament. It was not a mystery that the Messiah was going to come. You have it in Genesis 3.15 that He was coming. The earliest, earliest prophecy in the Bible is that He was coming and that He would die. That's not a mystery. But there was something about this, this kingdom of heaven that was offered to Israel that was a mystery. It was something they didn't know. And so he's going to reveal it to them. And the thing that he's going to reveal to them is that there's going to be a period of time that one, he was going to be crucified, and he tells them that later on, but that after his crucifixion he would be raised and ascended, and that there would be a period of time, something like 40 years, that he would be gone. And in his absence, they would preach this gospel of the kingdom that he commissions them to preach. And during, while they are gathering converts and, and candidates for this kingdom of heaven, there would be all kinds of wickedness and evil in the midst of it. This is something that they never understood. They understood that when the kingdom of heaven was set up, uh, that Jesus Christ was going to purge out all evil, and there wouldn't be any evil, there wouldn't be any corruption, there wouldn't be any delay, that he would simply set up his kingdom and it'd be business. 
So the mystery then for, the, for this ministry of the kingdom of heaven was that there would be a delay before it would be set up. 